Today on Mr. Media, I'll talk to Sex with Emily podcast host Emily Morse. She's got a delicately titled new book out called Hot Sex, Over 200 Things You Can Try Tonight. Stick around, except those of you who'll be alone tonight. This book is not going to be much comfort for you guys. Mr. Media is recorded live before a studio audience of guys and gals who thought they knew every trick in the book until they saw the illustrations in Hot Sex in the new new media capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. As a podcaster myself, there are several people in this industry of whom my admiration knows no bounds. The comedian Mark Marin, for example, who found a way to make the comedy world beat a path to his California garage. And Emily Morse, my guest today, took a subject as mundane as sex, come on, everybody's doing it, right? And owns it in podcasting with a long-running show called Sex with Emily. She's Emily. (laughs) She's grown the audio show into broadcast radio distribution, online video, a TV show in development, a paid subscription model, iPhone apps, and books, including her latest, written with Jamie Waxman, called Hot Sex, Over 200 Things you can try tonight. Now the thing about sex with Emily is that it's graphic without being offensive to even the most sensitive ears. Emily developed a formula that has broad appeal, particularly, I suspect, to women. Now this is Emily's second visit to Mr. Media. The last time she was here, she was in the midst of a long sex drought, which I suspect is long over. Trust me, I'll ask. Emily Morris, (laughs) Welcome back to Mr. Media. Oh, it's so good to be here. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Nice to see you this time. It adds another nice dimension. Nice to see you too. I love it. Yeah. I, I, would, I, was, I was telling Emily before the show started that uh, she reminds me a lot of Emmy Rossum from uh, Shameless. Thank you. I see that. <laughs> Thank you for doing it with video. I feel, you know, it's <laughs> extra cool. Um, so uh, how does this sound? Um, Emily Morse, sex media queen. Oh, I love it. That's exactly what I'm going for. Yeah. Yeah, it's a media brand that I'm that I've been building for seven years, so that feels good. And it's, I mean, am I wrong? I mean, it seems like in the last year or two, it's really started to explode. I mean, it seems like it's a real, it's it's, it was always something you were doing, but it, it just seems like a really growing business now, as opposed to something you were doing maybe until something else came along or. Yeah, yeah, it really it really has grown in the last two years. I have two iPhone apps, like you mentioned, and a book, and then I'm doing the. The paid model, but we also still do free shows on Friday for the people who don't want to pay. But hopefully everyone will pay and subscribe because we are doing four shows a week and all that stuff. But, um, yeah, it really has. And then this TV show, and it's, it feels like it's really, you know, you just stick with it, something that you love and that you're passionate about, and just hope that you can make a living doing it. But it's been tough, but I think it is t- definitely on an upswing. Well, yeah. It seems like you're doing everything uh, you can to make a business out of sex with Emily without having to do prostitution. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> but I haven't ruled it out. Really? No, I'm kidding. We'll talk <laughs> later. Um, so what's been the biggest change in the world of sex with Emily in the past year? I guess in the past year would be um, my iPhone app, Kegel Camp. Kegel Camp is doing really well. It's for men and women. Men can do Kegels too. And, um, I'm and doing they- them now. You are, see? You never even know. You can do them all the time because they really help. And it's funny because that is a thing. A lot of men have problems with, you know, with, with sex, premature ejaculation or having issues or women can have longer, stronger orgasms. So Kegel Camp has been doing really well in the iTunes store. And um, I think my book coming out has been great. And then this TV show, which I can't really talk about, has been crazy. And also I've, I've started doing the subscription model with video every day so people can see me because for a long time people were like, we want to see you. And I... I was kind of, you know, doing radio, and, you know, it's nice, and it's kind of nice, you can go, in my pajamas, I could record a show, but now I'm, you know, doing video every day, so it's a little different, but it has gotten, yeah, it's gotten more popular, so I just, thank God, very, it's what I want to do, it's my passion, so, and I'm going to school, I'm getting my PhD in human sexuality. I, I was just going to ask you about that, when we spoke uh, the last time, I think you were pretty early in that process. Uh, yeah, and and it, it was leading to some very interesting stories on the radio show, right? 
Yeah, it's fun. It's uh, it is. It's I um, yeah, I'm still doing it. I have about another year left of doing it, but it's been fun. I mean, it's been it's a very it's a very San Francisco school. It's very um, out there, hands on um, experience. But it's it's been good. I'm almost done. So I guess another another nine months. Has formalizing your sex education uh, has it changed your view of things? Has it changed uh, both you know in terms of professionally in, in the Sex with Emily Empire and also personally? Um, yeah, it has. I have to say that there's so much because I just started. Everyone's like, "Why are you an expert? Why are you an expert?" And I've read. I mean, I could turn the show you. I have every sex book. I've interviewed hundreds of people. You know, as you have, and I felt like an expert, but. Going to school definitely formalizes it, and you know I have to do a bunch more reading and research and surveys, and so it does. It does feel good to have that, that to have that background. It just adds to what I already, to what I already know, definitely. And I'm enjoying it. And the students, you know, as in school, as always, you learn so much just from the people in your class. I mean, people going to school for sex is. I'm the tame one in the group. I mean, people are way more out there than I am. I feel like the prude. So um, it's been an interesting experience, yeah. Not that there could ever be anything strange or weird about sex, but what is the strangest, weirdest thing you've picked up in, the, in, in, in your studies that had not even been on your radar before? Um, I'm trying to think. I, you know what? I really don't know what the strangest thing is with sex that hasn't been on my radar. That's Let me think about that for a second. I don't have an answer for that. I mean, I guess it's just like we have to watch a lot of... um. We have to watch a lot of porn and stuff for class, and so we had to, like, watch people having, like, sex with animals. Oh. You have to watch that? We have to. And a lot of 70s porn, which I knew existed, but I've never watched, like, you know, dozens of hours of 70s porn to see how porn has evolved over time. But I don't think there's anything really out there because I feel like I've heard it. I've heard so much, you know. I've seen, I've heard, I've gotten email, you know, I get thousands of emails from listeners, and so... I think I've heard it all. Probably not, though. I hope I haven't heard it all. But I've heard, you know, a lot. So S- 70s porn. That's There's a, how can I put this delicately? A lot of hair everywhere in 70s A lot porn. of hair everywhere. Like, you can't believe how much it's it's changed. Yes. <laughs> Lots of hair. No. Yeah. Well, Very ha- hair. Having grown so up, hairy. yeah, having grown up in the 70s, now I have a pretty good idea what you're seeing. It's, uh, yes. it's different. And, and you got all that funky wah-wah mo- music. Exactly. And- exactly. That's what it's been. And, um, yeah, it's been interesting. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> All right. So I, I, know, I know what you really want to talk about is the book. So uh, we've, we, people have seen the, the cover by now. You and I both have copies of it handy. Just yes. to be sure, to reassure you, I have it right here. I have yeah. read every – oops. I have read every page. Why did you Amazon? I'm sorry. Really? Yeah. You read every page? I did. I did. It's amazing. I can't have a guest on without reading her book. That's true, although I've done that, but I don't tell anyone. No. No, I, I – Okay. Sometimes, sometimes with, non, with uh, fiction, I may not read to the very last chapter, so I don't take a chance on giving away the ending right. before I interview, but I always, always read the book. Okay. Absolutely read the book. So no, I, here's the uh, – what I thought would be the most obvious question to ask you is, have you actually tried everything in the book, or do you just know about everything in the book? I think I know about everything in the book. I haven't tried every single thing in the book, I have to be honest. I have never had sex on a washing machine, on a dryer or washing. There's, you know, there's a page about having sex on a washing machine. I've never done that. There's a few other things I haven't tried, but I look forward to trying it all. Like, I was, like, thinking I, it'd be fun to have a partner that I'm, like, let's work through all the pages and put little post-its where we've already, you know, what we've hit and what mm-hmm. we have. So that's a goal of mine. I'd like to, but I, I'd like know, to have that partner, too. Um, maybe my <laughs> wife will see that. Never mind. Um. <laughs> no, it's true, though. It's funny. I, I got an email yesterday from a listener who said he's been with his wife for 12 years and that the book has truly, which is the goal of why I did it, but he said it's truly spiced up their sex life because they're working through it because it's an easy book to digest. It's not like I'm saying go do something crazy wild out there that you've never heard of, it's, but it's just kind of like, oh, we can do this tonight. We can do that tonight. So that feels good because I kind of wanted it to be a hands-on guide that people feel like is useful. The the challenge I think it, I mean I'm I'm uh, uh, middle aged we'll just go with middle aged at this point and okay. I, I mean the thing I've learned is I've always been very interested in, in sex I've always read a lot about it I've been very interested to talk you know don't have the hangups to talk about it that's not a problem and the thing that I always thought when I was younger was you know you read about 
it seemed like for for men and women as they if they late forties and their fifties and stuff, you would read about it would be more unusual to find people who were extremely active, as opposed to it seemed more common in reading about it at the time. Uh, people who were, you know, they were slowing down and there was less of it either because of kids or physical things. Um, I, I think, of, so I'm thinking that a book like this is probably aimed a little younger, that a different type of book might be aimed a little older. You know what? I don't really think so. I think that people are having sex and, and, and well into, you know, their 50s, 60s, 70s. I get, my listenership is actually skews a little bit older, and I think that it's for everybody. I think it's for everybody who wants to have better sex and improve their sex life. I mean, sure, there might be some things in there that might seem younger, but I feel like it's kind of doable for everybody. Mm-hmm. So, that yeah, that wasn't, it's kind of, I think sex is, it definitely changes over the years, but I think that there's certainly things in here for everybody. All right. So if you haven't done everything in the book, now the wa- of all the things you would mention that you have not done, the washing <laughs> machine or the dryer, uh, that one surprised me. But <clears throat> do you have a favorite move from the book, something that you, you, know, um, you like a lot? Yeah, a favorite move. I like the um, – let's see. I like the uh, the, te- the, the teasing chapter. There's so a few things. I like the teasing chapter of like just – because I think that teasing is sort of a lost art, that teasing is so much about like what women like about sex, and, and men too, and men like to be teased, and I think it's when people talk about their sex lives becoming more mundane or routine, that when you can prolong it, it's like foreplay and teasing and all that, I think that that's so important, and we have some good tricks in there about, you know, spicing it up and extending that process and getting actually excited again and kissing again and teasing each other and just being more playful mm-hmm. and leading up to sex. That it isn't all about just the actual act of having sex, that there's so much more around it that you can do that will spice up your sex life. So uh, uh, teasing patience, I guess, is what what you're talking about here. Is people, yeah. You're encouraging people to show a little more patience. and Exactly, and not just rush to it. And that sex is not just about intercourse. It's about just so many other things, teasing, playing, um, you know, holding off on sex and just like exploring your partner's body and, you know, and massage. I love the massage page because um, th- th- there's this massage candle that I always talk about that I'm sort of obsessed with by Jimmy Jane. And it's a jimmyjane.com. They're great. They're one of our sponsors, but I love, I've loved their products for years. And it's this massage candle that burns cooler than most wax. And you pour it on and it turns into, you burn it for a little bit and it turns into massage oil oil and massage and you can rub it on your partner's body and it's a very like a and massage is always a great thing too to just you know don't rush into sex but it's for it's foreplay but if you who doesn't want a massage and then it smells amazing these candles so you've got the mood you've got the lighting of the candle and then you turns into this amazing lotion that you just can use anytime you want so i love i love the pictures on that page too so it's fun and the strip tease i like the strip tease page of the the woman doing a strip tease and I actually got this email from a listener, which was kind of bittersweet a few weeks ago, that said that he was reading it, and, um, oh, not this book, but on my show, I had said that teasing is something that, um, strip tease is something that men and women really like, and he said, I was saying, I was in my, I think in, I had said that it was a top thing for men, they like to see the partnership tease, well, his wife was, had cancer, and she was sick, and, and, and it was, he said the last time they had sex, he had done a strip tease for her because he had heard it on my show and then she died actually but it was something that you know he found inspired by by the show and by the book to do a little strip tease and I really enjoy I like the strip tease page that's kind of what we used to sell the book was the picture of the girl doing a little strip tease so yeah the illustrations are fun in the book De- definitely they're, they're very well done and uh, for people who are who may be encountering you for the first time through this show and have not already seen the podcast, I think the way you just explained about the teasing and the strip tease kind of supports my point that uh, you do it a little more subtly. It's, you're not hitting people over the head with the sex. You, I mean, this is just, this is, this is just Emily being Emily. This is the way Emily no. talks about it. Exactly. I really try to be more, yeah, like sex for everyone. Sex, more mainstream sex, I guess is what I say. It's not like I'm, you know, we talk about everything. We'll talk about fetishes and BDSM and all. We, we do touch on all that stuff, but really it's like it's it's sex for, for every person. For every, it, it doesn't, I want people to feel comfortable and I want it to, 
a big thing about the show is that it sparks conversation. So a lot of couples listen to the show together. Mm-hmm. So it's not like you have to say, honey, I'd really like this. But like Emily said that we could try this or, you know, use the show as a tool to kind of spice it up in a way that isn't, you know, yeah, so in your face. And so I asked you about a, a favorite move in the book. What about a least favorite thing? Something that you almost would have been happy to leave out. I'm sorry. Say that again. I just I'm sorry. Up. Uh, I asked you earlier about uh, your, your your favorite move in the book. What about a least favorite move? Something you would have been happy to just leave out? Oh my God! I don't even know. Um, I don't think I have a least favorite move. Um, there's something. Let me hold on. I got the book right here. Let me see if there's something. Um, I don't know. I mean, there's some weird move. <laughs> No, I don't know. I don't think there's anything that I would want to leave out. Okay. I have to say there's nothing that I feel that I don't support. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, um... I'm like, I'm trying to come up with something, but no. I I mean, there's nothing that I feel like, because I feel like, you know, I mean, maybe it doesn't appeal to me, but it's good to have it in the book. It'll appeal to somebody. Hope. All right. All right. Well, speaking of uh, actual sexual activity... Uh, I mentioned that the last time we spoke, you had been in a bit of a drought. Yes. Um, I was on my mandatorium, right? Yes. Was it my mandatorium? Okay, yes. I was in a drought. But I think I was also, yeah, I was purposely doing my mandatorium, which is a, you know, a moratorium on men, have no having no sex. And I did that for about, yeah, five, six months it lasted, and now I am having sex again. I'm dating. Thumbs up, right? a girl. Experience. I was going from one relationship to the next. I just wanted to see what life would be like without having sex, ironically. But it was an interesting experience. I think I learned a lot about, because I'm not in a committed relationship, but I learned a lot about how much we, like for me, I was trying to just focus on work and that relationships can be a distraction and that we rely on that, them so much and the fact that our brains, I don't know, for me, I was just like, you know, I, I would make my relationship such a big part of my life, which it should be when you're in one, but I was also dating people I wasn't that into, and I just decided to cut it all out and just focus on myself. Mm. I think it's good to have time alone without, you know, there, I was going from one relationship to the next, and I just wanted to spend some time alone, so it was good. It was a good growth period for me. So uh, seven years into the uh, media sex empire that is Sex with Emily, <laughs> Do you do you worry at all that uh, if you got into a, a real committed relationship long term that actually may have may lead may lead to marriage or something of permanence God like forbid. that? Could that um, but could that threaten the empire and, and just the way you approach it? I don't think it? so. I don't think so. No, because it's, the show is not so much about my own sex life. I really don't. I reveal bits and pieces, but I don't talk. I mean, I know people would like me to talk about it more. But I really don't talk about it that much. It's not really like, it is called Sex with Emily. As my friend once said, he's like, the show's called Sex with Emily, but it has nothing to do with your sex life. Mm-hmm. So um, I do think that it wouldn't harm it. I think that people would just go on the journey with me. And I think that it would, you know, I think it would help a lot of my married listeners if I did get married. We'll see what happens. I, I, I would have to say that I think... Uh, uh, I agree. There's something... Uh, it, it's a bit of a tease in and of itself, not knowing the actual details of Emily's sex life. But exactly. you know, we, we keep coming for it. Uh, uh, at the same time, I would say uh, n- knowing, um, I, I think your listeners would probably be a lot more interested in hearing the details of of, uh, of your activity than they would say, oh, Dr. Ruth's activity. Right, uh, right. Even, even yeah. 30 years ago when I listened to Dr. Ruth, I wasn't exactly. terribly interested in knowing you know, what she was doing. <laughs> right. So. And that's where I'm going to be Dr. Emily in a year so. I don't know. I mean, I guess people are interested, but I also don't want it to be all about me. Sorry, that's my dog. I don't want it to be all about me. I mean, my my own sex life because I'm really trying to help people. But and if if my if I find that there's something in my life that can help, I will bring it to the table. But just to give anecdotes, like last night I was with this guy. I just that's not the you know that's right. not what the show's about. Well, and I think that's why it appeals so broadly, frankly. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I guess so. It was so it's so organic, as you probably know. You don't really. And, and creating something is like that. You, you don't know exactly what it's going to be, but I guess it's sort of evolved into, you know, what it is. And I, I also don't, I know, I don't know, it, appeal, it just, I'm just glad it appeals to people, all different people. And it's funny, you said my audience was mostly women, but it's actually mostly men. Really? Yeah. I didn't, no, I didn't, I don't think I yeah, realized that. Yeah, it's weird, but I think it's, it's changing a little bit, but it has been more men hmm. that I hear from. Yeah. Um, is your life as sex-centric as we might want to think it is, or 
do you have other interests? I mean, you know, what else do you do during the course of a day besides talk, write, or, you know, think about sex? Um, what do I do? I do, I do, oh, God, um, yoga. <laughs> I do yoga. I do meditation. I live in California. Come on. I do yoga, meditation. I, I work out. I hang out with friends a lot. I have an amazing group of friends. So it's weird. San Francisco, a lot of my friends are single. We have lots of dinner parties. We cook. I don't actually cook, but my friends are amazing cooks, um, chefs, and we cook and we just hang out and I, you know, I take a lot of side trips, go up to Napa or go down hiking in like Big Sur and, you know, I live in Northern California. There's so much, so much beautiful things. Like, actually not today, but yesterday was like, it was 70 degrees here. So I do a lot of stuff outdoors. And what are my other interests? I mean, honestly, I'm obsessed with my, I, I am obsessed with building my brand and my work and, and that does take up more time than it's, I don't know. I, I've always been that way, though. No matter what I'm doing, it's like 110% I put into it. So a lot of it is is this brand. Now, I, I have a note here to ask you about this, and I can't, I, to be honest, uh, I can't remember why I have this here, so, <laughs> so help me here. But I, I have a note that you recently switched from Android to iPhone. Yes! Right? I love my iPhone! I can't believe I didn't have an iPhone. I, I don't know... What happened was my carrier, when the iPhone came out, I didn't like the carrier, whatever. It was just it dropped calls, and especially in San Francisco. So I just waited, and then I got the droid, and I never had time to go to the store, whatever. And I have two iPhone apps. I didn't even have my apps. I am in love with the iPhone. I mean, like, I can't believe I live without it. I've only had it for about a m uh, month and a half. Mm -hmm. How did I... Do you have an iPhone? No, my my wife and daughter have them. I have I have an Android, and they, even Android. They they keep beating me up to make the switch, but you've uh, got to do it. I, I mean, I, it's like everyone knows it. I, I don't know. I just I love the iPhone. I'm taking pictures. I'm on Instagram. I'm tweeting more. I just I love it. Well, the irony here in our house is that I've had Apple products since 1984, but right. for some reason I I I've been very happy with. A, I've been with T-Mobile and the carriers that had them before, and right. I just never, you know, it's always been good service and heard so many awful things about AT&T, and I just never made right. the switch. But, the re okay, the, the reason I asked you about that, though, is that having your apps on iPhone, uh, certainly in, under Steve Jobs, I don't, we don't know how it'll be going forward, but the, uh, the, the, uh, the app store has been notorious about its uh, attitude towards anything sexual. I know. It's amazing. I got it in. Because um, my first app is called 101 Sex Tips from Sex with Emily. And they're also pretty, um, I don't know. I, I, for some reason, I got it. We got it in. I don't know how. But it's, you know, it's a, again, it's kind of like my show. It's not really in your face crazy sex. It's more like basic teasing, foreplay, it's things you can do sexually. But it's it's not, for whatever reason, it was PG enough to, to get through to the i store to the iTunes store, and then Kegel Camp is like you know your doctor recommends that you do Kegel exercise recommends do Kegel so that's you know it's sex but it's you know gets in and then and then and then sex with Emily as far as the podcast I don't know it was accepted early on I've just been lucky I don't know I don't swear on my show we don't it's not that graphic I mean I think there's people doing a lot more graphic things than I am so probably while they're listening exactly yeah that's what Menace always says he's my sidekick on the show yeah. he's always like. People are just masturbating and listening. I'm like, whatever, as long as they're listening. Uh, uh, Dennis, Dennis tends to be the more graphic of the two of you, of course. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, he's, you know, he's strangely, in some ways, he's the spice. It's hard to think. It's hard to imagine, yeah. but yeah. All right, so uh, before we wrap up, are you ready for kind of a lightning round of questions? Yeah, go for it. All right. Uh, favorite body part? Um, stomach. Okay. Uh, favorite sexual memory? Um, sex on a mirror. Ooh. I mean, I, 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 it was like I, a big mirror <laughs> and it was like a, I can't explain it. Just popped in my head. Sex in a mirror. All right. That's yeah. the, that's the difference in our ages. Uh, when I was your age, I think, I, I think that would make my head spin. And now I just <laughs> think, no, nah, I don't think I want to see that. Um, <laughs> what about uh favorite sexy movie? Favorite sexy movie. Um, oh God. The first sexy movie I saw was The Postman Always Rings Twice. Oh, yeah. So I would say that. That was the first one I saw, and I was like, oh, my God, I was really little, and I was like, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, just to just clarify, we're talking about the Nicholson Lang version? Yeah. Right, yeah. I think so. He clears the kitchen table and just throws everything on the floor. and. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm with you. 
That is the, that was the first time I saw a movie that I was like, wow, oh, yeah, sex, got sex. it. <laughs> yeah. I'm feeling something tingly. I don't know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I was in college when I saw that. That was that was quite a memory. I'll, I'll go with you on that. What about, f- okay. other than your own, what about favorite sexy book? Favorite sexy book? Um, uh, I always liked, um, like, Woman on Top and all the erotica that, um, what's her name? I have it right here. You know, um, I have Avery's, yeah, Woman on Top. All right, all right. Uh, okay, favorite recurring sex fantasy? Oh, God. Um, I don't know. I have so many. I can't say. Oh, oh I think that's a cop-out. Isn't okay. that a cop-out? You don't have to be graphic, but I think that's a cop-out. It has to do with... Okay. I don't know. Um, I think it has to do with like more like being teased, being tied up, being teased. All right. Prolonging sex. I think we're yeah. all in favor of that. That sounds good. Okay. Um, last question for the lightning round. Favorite replacement idea for Menace, your co-host, if he ever left the show? You. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Putting you on notice, Dennis. Done. The one thing that would make me move to San Francisco, okay? Would you do it? I, I, oh, sure. Hell yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. <clears throat> All right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you should be a guest on my show sometime. Sounds good. Of course, then I'd have, do to, it? I'd have to say things. I have a teenage daughter. I don't know. That might be a problem. We'll okay. see. We'll see. You, you, okay. you make the invitation and uh, we'll work it out. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, we've got the book. This is just out. You're uh, you're finishing your PhD. You you know what's next? What what's left to conquer? What's next to conquer? Um, just I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing. I just literally I love doing my show. Um, and we're on Sirius XM now uh, on Friday nights. So um, on Extreme Talk 165, and we're gonna be on Playboy Radio starting in March. And I just keep keep doing it and watch for me on, I shouldn't say this, but television. There's going to be some television stuff in my future. And um, I'm just going to keep going with Sack with Emily and see where it takes me. Cool. I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're on the Playboy radio. That seems fitting. My, my biggest problem with Playboy the last couple of years has been Playboy radio is more entertaining than Playboy magazine. And it seems like the, yeah. the magazine should take a few hints from Playboy radio. Yeah. To sustain yeah, yeah, yeah. Itself. Yeah. Yeah, so we're starting that in March. I, I, that's good. That, I mean, that's good to hear. I um, they I've been a guest on their shows a lot, but I never. Yeah, but they're asking me to do a live show starting in March. So very cool. We'll see what happens. All right, I'll spice up that, and then I'm going to be on Spice too. Actually, speaking of Spice, which is another channel on Sirius XM. So I just want to. I love radio. I mean, I just want to keep doing radio and um, you know, talking and writing and helping people with their sex lives. We like that. Um, folks, uh, listen, you can order Emily Morris's new book, Hot Sex, over 200 things you can try tonight in great bookstores everywhere, or you can order it right now at a great price at mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. Of course, the website for Sex with Emily is sexwithemily.com, where you can subscribe to her video and audio podcasts, or you can follow her. I know she's on Twitter, Facebook, anywhere else we want to mention? Um, Instagram. Instagram. It's all sex with Emily, yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, Emily, uh, always a pleasure to talk to you. I'm so happy so for your success. Thank you. Thank and, you. Uh, just make sure you let Menace know that I'm looking over his shoulder, okay? I will. I'm going to let him know today. All right. Okay. Peace out, Menace. <laughs> okay. Great to see you. Take okay. care. Great day. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. For more original interviews, surf over to our main website, mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. If you've enjoyed today's show, subscribe for free to Mr. Media via email, RSS, or iTunes, and you'll never miss a show. Another good idea, download our new free Mr. Media mobile app in the Android market. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many parts of the Internet. Show your support of Mr. Media by supporting our sponsors, including Audible. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash radio. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash radio for your free audiobook. We're also supported by the thepartyauthority.us. Call DJ Ira for all your party entertainment needs nationwide at 1-800-DIAL-DJs. 
or visit their website, thepartyauthority.us. If you've got an idea for a guest, a comment on today's show, or would like to advertise on Mr. Media Radio, email me directly at bob at mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. You can also call our 24-hour listener line at 1-727-498-4711. Some messages may be used in an upcoming show. And unless you live next door to Mr. Media, there may be a toll charge. You can also follow Mr. Media on Facebook, Twitter, or our new YouTube and Vimeo video channels. Thanks so much for joining us today. I always appreciate you sharing a piece of your day with Mr. Media. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Hey, everybody. This is Bob Andelman from Mr. Media. First of all, I want to thank you for years of support uh, listening to the show. We're starting our sixth year. It's hard to believe our sixth year uh, as 2012 starts and heading towards our 1,000th online podcast, uh, audio and video. It's uh, pretty amazing, <laughs> frankly. Uh, I remember starting it several years ago thinking, this will never last. And podcasts, that's as stupid a word as blogging. But here we are, <laughs> starting our sixth year and heading up to a thousand interviews. And I want to thank everybody for uh, listening and supporting the show. I also want to tell you that, uh, you know, one of the things that's been very helpful for this show is Stitcher Radio. Yes, this is sort of a commercial. Now, there are millions of smartphone apps in the world, but I only use one several times a day, Stitcher Radio. I build my own radio station to listen to broadcast and online shows when I want and in the order I want. CNN News Update, Onion Radio News, WTF with Mark Marin, MSNBC's Morning Joe, Studio 60, the TechCrunch headlines, and, of course, Mr. Media. It's free. It works on iPhone, Android, BlackBerry, Palm Pre, and much more. And you can get it for free for yourself. Try it out. I guarantee you're going to love it. Stitcher.com slash MRmedia. That's Stitcher.com slash Mr. Media. You're going to love it. And thanks again for supporting the show. <laughs>